Next, we head to the Midwest in Knoxville, Iowa, home of the single biggest World of Outlaw Sprint Car Race held each year. And 1987 was no disappointment. The action started as 23S Rocky Hodges and 32U Dave Fitzgerald came together in the front straight, sending Rocky Hodges into the muddy infield and out of contention to win that heat. Now that was obviously pretty minor stuff. Nothing on the cars was bent badly. But here's how Brock Yates and I called an incident that was a little more serious. We've got problems this turn one. Leland McSpadden, Brock, has tangled with 31 white roll. And here is Bobby Allen slamming into Randy Smith, and he is upside down right in the middle of the racetrack. The red flag is out. This heat has been stopped for obvious reasons. Bobby Allen appears to be okay. One of the great veterans of the World of Outlaws, a former go-kart champion, Bobby Allen, out of the car, okay. As you may have noticed, that huge wing on top of the race car serves another purpose besides downforce retraction. It is also a cushion in a rollover situation. Bobby Allen in the 1A car, tumbling through your picture, walked away from this one because the wing helped cushion the roll. 1988 was a year of even more incredible incidents in Knoxville. Brock and I called it. A big crash, Al Schmidt and Billy Valour in turn number one. It appears as if the drivers are all right. Once again, a really hard spill as the field headed down into turn number one. As we take another look at this crack up, it seems that both drivers were going for an outside line. And the 25, Al Schmidt, who was in front, scrubbed the fence and Billy Billhauer hit him from behind starting both cars tumbling toward the middle of the track. Both men walked away. The wings once again helped cushion most of the impact. Then, in all my experience of covering sprint cars, this next incident is the most spectacular I have ever seen. Oh, in turn number one, they're in the fence for the multi-car incident. In turn number one, this race will be stopped immediately. We've got a car outside the track, Steve. One went right through the fence. It looks like Marlon Jones in the number nine. That race car spilled upside down as Danny Tolman's 2V. He is still in that automobile. Now you hear the applause from this giant crowd. That means that Marlon Jones is out of his race car. John Cernet is out of the car. Dave Blaney is apparently all right, but right now the concern is directed at Danny Toman in that automobile. There's one of the emergency workers trying to get him unhooked. Let's hope he's all right. These roll cages are very stout, but they're never quite stout enough. So concern here uh, spreading through this giant audience. There is Marlon Jones, number nine. Believe it or not, he walked out of that race car. Completely out of the park, Steve, but note, roll cage into and that big wing apparently helped to cushion the automobile. But it's going to be some time before they get that fence repaired. There he is! Danny Tolman out of the race car. He, too, is all right. So we got four cars totally destroyed, but thankfully, four drivers are all right. And now it's time to take another look at this one, Brock. One of the most spectacular accidents that we have ever seen in our six-year coverage of World of Outlaw Racing. I don't have to tell you that it all happened right here in turn number one. An incredible, almost like a train wreck, as these cars literally disintegrate into that fence outside turn number one. Unbelievable that these drivers were apparently uninjured as we watch this wreckage begin to be strewn all over the racetrack here at Knoxville. Okay, let's take another look as they come down the front straightaway toward the green flag. All right, watch the white number two. That's Marlon Jones in the number nine cutting in front of him. And then Jones slides up against the 14S of John Cernet, which causes him to flip. Danny Toman in the 2V rolls. Marlon Jones goes through the fence. Dave Blaney in the 48 car goes through the wreckage, picking up shrapnel. His car is badly damaged, but does not roll. The only one of the four not to get upside down. Just run down exactly what happened to you, Dave. Well, I kind of was trailing along the outside fence there on the start, and uh, it looked like a couple guys got tangled up in the middle of the racetrack, and they just come all just come skating out to the outside, and all got in the fence. You uh, you tore up the front end, but do you think you can get it fixed? Yeah, it looks like it right now. I got about 30 guys working on it. Yeah, I think we'll get it fixed. Okay, thanks, Dave.